so um, everybody seems to have found y double prime for no problem. So y prime is uh, cosine of x, and y double prime would be the derivative of cosine, which is like a sine. Yep. And this one would be, or we got uh, it's the constant times the derivative. The derivative would be e to the negative x. Of course, we always bring down exactly what we have, e to the power of whatever. And then if it's something other than x, then we use chain rule, multiply by the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. Okay, and then we do it again. We have negative 4 times e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, which gives us positive 4 e to the x, negative x. And then we have the constant times the derivative. So y double, double prime is just the constant times the derivative again. We can take the derivative of this forever and just always get the same thing. Okay, then we plug in y double prime, which we just found, and y, which we are given, and see does it satisfy the equation. Okay, so for y equals sine x, plug in y double prime, which is negative sine x, minus uh, y, which is sine x. And does it equal zero? No. no. What does it equal? Negative two sine x. They're not equal. We'll talk about what that means in a second. Okay, here we do it again. Y double prime is four e to the negative x, and y is also four e to the negative x. Is it equal zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. They're the exact same thing. That checks out. Here we plug in y double prime and y. They're also identical. C to the c times e to the x minus c times e to the x does equal zero. zero. Yes. All right. So let's talk about what this means. It's, it's basically a lesson in vocabulary. So this is an equation. Agreed? Mm -hmm. It's an equation that involves a function. What's the name of that function? Y. Y is the name of that function. And y is derivative, or y is second derivative, or y is third derivative. Since this involves uh, the, the highest like the highest order derivative is the second derivative. This is called a second uh, order. Second order. Okay, and here's some vocab for you. Differential equation. The differential equation sounds really ominous and scary, but it's just an equation that involves a function, y is that function, and its derivative, or second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever derivative. Let me make sure I got that uh, word of order correct. Wait, if it was third order differential equation, would that be y triple prime? You'd have to have a y triple prime in there. So whatever the highest de degree derivative is, or highest order derivative, that's the name of it. Okay. Um, yeah. Second order differential equation. I think that is crucial that you know that, but we can talk about it. We can use those words. So in, an, in a situation where, like an AP question situation, this is probably what you would start with. They're going to ask you about this equation. They're going to ask you to find a solution to this differential equation, okay? Or a solution. Or verify that something's a solution to the differential equation. Something like that. Okay, so what does it mean? Well, a solution to this differential equation, one of them, is y equals 4 e to the negative x because for this function, its second derivative and the original function can go into the equation and it's true. They satisfy the equation. Okay? Same is true for c times e to the x. That also satisfies the equation because it, y, and its second derivative together in that equation satisfy the equation. Sine of x is not a solution to this differential equation because it doesn't satisfy the equation. Okay? So, I wanted to start off with that so that you didn't hear me say differential equation and that's some weird set of things, especially since we've worked with differentials before and they are a challenge. Uh, we'll do, be doing more differentials, but uh, you know, we'll go a little more in depth actually solving differential equations. To solve differential equations, you're given the derivative or its second derivative or whatever typically, and then it's usually about finding the antiderivative and, uh, and working from there. So it's a lot about taking the or setting yourself up to be able to take the antiderivative. Okay. So let's do this like kind of again. And we'll work with this function. Okay. So typically, it won't be that you're
actually given a function and asked to find the derivative, but that will be part of the process. So I'm kind of starting you out, uh, like first step that you would actually do. What we're doing now is verifying that this is the solution to some differential equation. So we start by finding the derivative. <coughs> This is a fork. What? Yeah, Cali is your own fork. I have one on. Oh, you just travel with a fork? Yeah. I do too. I travel with silverware. <laughs> Up and uh, show us how to find Wi Fi while I eat pie. Probably want to get the white friends all on one side. Yeah. Right? When you do whatever you need to do to get white prime, the white friends together on one side, just like you would if you were solving for any variable. You collect them on one side together and figure out a way to get the white side. Why are you writing dy dx and y prime? Is there a reason? Or change that on dy dx. It doesn't matter. dy dx and y prime. We can, can treat them as the same. Alright, so now we're trying to get y prime. Divide by negative two y, then you will have divide this whole thing by negative two y. Divide that by negative two y.
two x? Five for you. This part also. What part? Same part. What do you mean? Of the factoring. Show. Kind of y prime, verify that the original given equation, I'm referring to this, is a solution to the following differential equation. Why is this called a differential equation? It has to do with derivatives. It's got a function and it's derivative, so it's a differential equation. How do we verify that it's a solution? Well, you can try and take the antiderivative of this if you want. That's going to be quite a mess. Take the derivative of y prime? Yeah. So we need to find y double prime? Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Because that's the differential equation of it, isn't it? We could do the second order differential equation. Question. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why can't you just plug stuff in? Like, we know what y prime is, so you put it on that side? I don't know why you can't do that. Second guys. <laughs> oh, that's there's, second too. there's no need to find the second derivative. There's no second derivative in this equation. We only found the second derivative here because there was a second derivative in the differential oh, equation. Oh, okay. oh. Okay. What's not true? Uh, no, this is 6.1. Yeah. <coughs> this is a little more important than exponential equations, or uh, yeah, exponential functions with bases other than e. A little bit of that possible on the AP test, but there's more differential equation questions. Doing our best with the time we have. So all we have to do is take what we now know. I mean, we know what y prime is equal to. We also know what the original y function is equal to. And so we do whatever we can. We substitute whatever we need to into this equation to show that that and its derivative plug in here makes the equation true. Okay? It's not as easy as the previous differential equation. A little bit more cleverness necessary. Okay. So get on it. <coughs> Let's say start with plugging in y prime into this equation. So all you're left with is x's and y's. Try and get both sides of
you got both sides of the equation to be equal, I'm impressed. It's a little more challenging than the last one. It's not as simple as just plug both y prime and y in there, and it just magically happens. Okay. Uh, so like I said, the, my suggestion was to just start with y prime, plug y prime that we just found, the Sophie found, into y prime. This y prime, 2x over negative 2y plus 1, needs to be equal to 2xy over x squared minus y squared. Does it look kind of close? Or at least part of it looks kind of close? Sort of. The top looks kind of close? Yeah. You just need another y. You need another y. Can we put another y in there? It needs to be multiplied by a y, correct? Could I multiply this by a y, though? Yeah, maybe. How about if yeah, you answer yes if? If we multiply the other side. OK, definitely you would have to multiply the other side by y. That's one option. Is there a way we could not multiply this side by y? Because that kind of changes both sides. We'd like to just change the, the one side to look like this side. Is there something else we can do if we multiply this by y? Can we multiply something else by y that balances it all out? Wait, so you don't have to, on this, you don't have to plug in y for like the other all side the of the equation? You might choose to do that. And you might not. Oh, that was it. much harder. I just tried to do it. You tried to plug it in for all? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do that? No, we just have to show. <laughs> Take it. We have to show. Oh, good that word. this Thanks. function and its derivative are, you know, plug okay. them in and they satisfy. Okay. All right. Now, whether I call y y or I call y this thing, is up to me as far as like what is to my advantage. So oh, we might want to replace a y with with that, and we might not want to. So oh. multiply the denominator by y. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. <coughs> you said you can um, interchange. Oh, never mind. Actually, you can interchange the y for that yeah. at any point. Could you interchange the top of that one y with um, that, and That's then cancel out the top and bottom? Uh. Let's try. Let's do it this way, and then let's do it that way. Okay. Probably you can. All right. So you okay. Uh, so now the numerator looks like the numerator, 2xy, 2xy, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and then in the denominator, let's see, let's distribute the y. I've got negative 2y squared um, plus y, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the numerator looks good. The denominator looks kind of close, right? Yeah. It's got a y squared. There's another y squared. That's good. X Maybe squared. we want that. What's that? He's an x squared. He's an x squared. And okay. not a negative 2. And we don't want a negative 2y squared. We want a negative y squared. Yeah. So we got a y squared like we want, so that's good. We don't want a y, but you know what y is equal to? That, x squared plus yeah. y squared. Uh, Let's see if we replace this y with that, okay. if that might help us out. OK? Negative 2y squared plus x squared plus y squared. So we got the x squared. And negative 2y squared plus y squared is minus y squared. So we've got x squared minus y squared. We've got 2xy over x squared minus y squared. Um, is when you have the plus x squared plus y squared, uh, is it like, are you having it in the powers with the y squared, or are you having it? Like oh, it looks like it's in the exponent? Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, okay. It's just, see, this is 2, negative 2y two squared plus y. And you're just showing it. And like then this is y. Okay. So just replace y with, okay, with that's, that. Okay, that clears up. Because I was. In case you go back. That's uh, okay. In case you go back, just showing you, just plugging it in. Y is the same as that thing. Okay. So we only did as much substituting as we needed to do to make the both sides look the same. Uh, so Holly had a different idea. We had 2x over 2y plus 1. You said instead of multiplying by y? Um, instead of the y on the top, you change that to x, or no, instead of on this. the other side, yeah, that make y. That. put it in that, so then you can Let's see if maybe we can oh, make that the work. Other side. 
2x times x squared plus y squared yeah. over x squared minus y squared. Yeah. Um. It'd be better, but the other side is still has a denominator, so that's why it's still has a denominator. Yeah. Um. And, and you know maybe. Maybe replacing this y with x squared plus y squared as well would, would help. Yeah. Um, you know, you just got to kind of mess around with it until it works out. Now, there's a difference between this pro this kind of a problem and the kind of a problem we'll typically see. Kelly? I just had a question. Yeah. With the, in the original, the 2xy, where it's so purple like that, uh -huh. as long as you put the y on well, the top and the bottom, and it's not just like adding random stuff. No, because what's y divided by y? One. One. And so we're multiplying by y. <coughs> so it doesn't change anything. Okay. Um, what we'll typically see, though, is we'll be asked to find the solution to a differential equation. Okay. So I'm going to find the solution to a differential equation. Let's see what that's going to require. Okay, so let's start with a differential equation that's not. Um, start real easy with dy dx, and I can call this dy dx, or I could call it y prime. It doesn't make any difference. Is this a differential equation? Yeah. It doesn't have to have the function y in it, but it has the, the derivative of y is involved, right? So this may just look like I'm just telling you what the derivative is, which is true, I am doing that. That's all that's really going on. But also, since it involves a derivative of a function y, it's also called a differential equation. So we're going to find the solution to differential equation. Essentially, we're trying to find y, the function y, so that dy dx is equal to 3x squared. How would we do that? Yeah. If this is the derivative, I just find the function that has this derivative, which we call the antiderivative. I just want to find uh, this guy here. Um, or sorry, three x squared. Let's see, you got the third, and that's it, right? Plus c. Plus c. Ooh, good catch right there. So y equals x cubed plus c is what? Finish that sentence. The solution to the differential equation. Okay. So when we say v, that's kind of the, the word that I want to concentrate on for a second. Is could this be the differential, the v solution? It's a solution. It's a solution. Now you saw, like for instance, with the original differential equation that we were given, we found two different functions that were solutions to that differential equation, right? This one and this one. That could happen sometimes. Um, but even that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that uh, there might be some like e to the x thing that is the this also a solution to this differential equation. I'm saying that this isn't one function, right? How many functions does this represent? Infinite. An infinite number. Because of what? C to the end. Okay. But any solution to this differential equation is going to look like this. It could be equal to this. X cubed plus something. That something might be 0, that something might be 1, that something might be 12 or negative 57, whatever. Okay. So we wouldn't say that this is the solution. We would say that this is, we could say the general solution. Where if we wanted the solution, we call it the specific or particular solution. That makes sense? Now how are we going to figure out what the particular solution is? Find C. How do we find C? If in general you could just find C, wouldn't we have been finding C yeah. all along and not just put plus C? So there's no way to find C. So, there, so in this case, there's no particular solution to find. 
Now, can somebody tell me what kind of more inf what more information can I give you that would enable you to solve for c? Equal to y was a variable. If y wasn't a variable, what if x was still a variable? Could you solve for c? So you said y wasn't a variable. So if, we, if I told you y was five, right? So if I plug five in, does, you can tell me what c equals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you would still need x. To, you can't have two variables. So you need to know what x is and know what y is. Yeah. Okay. So, so like a point on the graph. Yeah. If you gave you a point on the graph of, of this function, then you can figure out what c was. Right. So if I also told you that there was this point on the graph, like. Uh, um, I'm gonna make sure that this will work out. Yeah. Okay, I can put anything in here. One and seven. So I told you that this point was on the graph of this function, then you could definitely figure out what C was, right? This here, this this extra information is something that we call an initial condition. Call it an initial condition. I just give you more information basically so that you can find C. And finding C, will you find the particular solution? Has anybody found the value of C? Uh, it's four. Six. No, I'm just kidding. Six. Yeah. Seven equals one cubed plus C. One cubed is one. Six equals C. So the particular solution is. solution to this differential equation? Um, y equals x squared, or x cubed plus six. Question, why, um, just give me a, a reason why you wouldn't put the x stuff into here, because you don't know why prime? Why you wouldn't put the x stuff into uh, Put the, 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 the point in there, because you don't know why prime. Why would you put it in, why would you not put it in here, but put, put it in here in instead? Yeah. Is it because, because the point that I'm giving you is about the function y. That one. Okay, it's not about that. It's not about that function. Okay. It's about this function. Gotcha. Okay. Good to what is C exactly? Like, if we're talking about it in terms of graphing it. Well, C is just a constant that you're adding. Okay? If you were to graph like some <coughs> calculator, so I'll graph y equals x cubed. Stuart? Yeah. Can I have a drink real quick? Yeah. So what's the graph of x cubed going to look like? Can you just draw it here? Yeah, but just x cubed is going to be more muted. It's not going to have so many like that. It's just going to flatten out and go like that. So yeah. So let's look at that graph. All right, 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. Negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 3 is negative 27. Yeah? yeah? What happens if I, I, I plug in 1 and I, I cube it and I get 1 and then I add 6 to it? to raise it up six, right? So C, in terms of graphing, is this like just vertical shifter looking, right? So if we plus six, just shifts it up six, right? So you can see why, when you find the antiderivative, you always put plus C, because since plus C is just this vertical shifter, the slopes of that graph at every given x are still the same. No matter where it is vertically, the, shift, the, the, the slopes at each x are the same. Okay. It's a good question. I like that you asked that question. So we got our general solution. We got our particular solution here in purple. Okay. So if we, if we were to think strictly in terms of you know, how I answer this question, the difference between a general solution and a particular solution is a particular solution you don't see. Um, so, I'm going to have you solve a differential equation. Which one shall I do? Eight. Whatever you do. Eight one. Just to, so there's uh, not a lot of confusion about what we're going to do. We're going to find a function that has this derivative.
a fraction. Let's make it not a fraction. Uh, making it not a fraction is a good idea. The only time that we really have a fraction that we can take the antiderivative of is when it looks like what? U, U D. Yeah. Which one? What? U's on top. Yeah. U's on top, U's on the bottom, right? Uh -huh. So the, the denominator, if you take the derivative, you get the numerator or something close to the numerator. Like you should multiply it by a constant. That's not the case here. You have to have like x squared down yeah. here. And even then, you have, you have x minus 2, which would be like how to get yeah. that. Something else. And think about that there's only so many functions that we want to take the antiderivative of. That would be x to the n dx, or, or u to the n. It's like something to the power of something. Uh, or some you know trigs, right? Trig functions. Uh, du over u, dx over x. Um, and e to the, let's say, e to the u du. There's just not that many. If you look at a list of all the ones that they're telling you not to take the antiderivative of, you gotta keep in mind they're probably giving you x's and u's, so they're trying to repeat, they're kind of repeating themselves. They're, uh, they're giving you all of the tricks, right? Sine, cosine, a secant squared, secant tangent. Keep in mind, like, they fit into some pretty limited number of classes. So where my brain goes is uh, the denominator itself is only one thing, right? Meaning that I can divide everything in the numerator by that thing. So I can take x over x minus 2 over x, like they were, they were once two fractions that had common denominators that got combined. In that way, I get x divided by x is 1 minus, and I'm going to write this as 2 times x to the negative 1. What's the antiderivative of 1? What? Oh, just x. x yeah. right? The derivative of x is 1. Yeah. yeah. And how about negative 2x to the negative 1? That would be negative 2, so it would be 3, 0. <laughs> 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 by saying, this particular case, when we just follow the power rule, we're getting there, it's close. Like, it doesn't work. If we take it to a zero, that's just going to be a constant. That doesn't make any sense. That's not going to have the derivative that has x in it. Maybe if I write it like this. Yeah, about 2 times 1 over x. 2 times, what's the, what's the antiderivative of 1 over x? Um, natural log. The natural log of x. Natural log of the absolute value of x. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. <coughs> we can just ver verify that if we take the derivative plus of this, we'll get negative 2 times 1 over x, which we do, plus c. 
That is, what is this? General. Yes, y equals x minus 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c is the general solution to that differential equation. Okay. I made it so it was general. Yeah. General. Okay, there, there are some slow field questions in here. Now we've done slow field questions in uh, the AP prep. That's where they give you a graph or a, a set of axes or coordinate point, and they have a bunch of Line. lines that are slanty, right? And the slantiness of that line is the slope of that, of that solution, or, or sorry, of that function at that point, right? We gotta figure out. You'd be asked several different things. Like, um, if dy dx equals x, let's say x over y, to figure out the slope of, like, this is telling the derivative of some function. The derivative communicates to you, like, the, the value, the number, the derivative tells you is telling the slope of the, the graph, some function, right? So, if I tell you, that uh, the, the, the function y goes through the point 2, 5, then you could use a differential equation to tell me what the slope is, right? What the slope of that function is at 2, 5. Slope that graph. How do we do that? You have to find the anti-derivative of x, y, y. Well, if we found the anti-derivative, then we'd have the function y, right? And then we want to find the, the slope of y. What we would do with y? We would take the derivative, which this is. Oh, okay. Plug that point in. So this is already the derivative of y. And so yeah, you plug in oh. 2 and 5. And the slope is 2 and 5. <laughs> Pretty simple. Uh, let me open up. So let me pull this up and make it all right. Oh no. Maybe they should rip your board out and give you one of the touch screen ones. Yeah, that's what we should do. Yeah. That'd be so cool. I didn't give Connor a chapter six to scan yet, so I'm gonna do that uh, in the day and give him a scan chapter six. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um So if you would look at number 49. Okay. If you don't have your book, just look up to somebody else. Just fill in that table for 49. It's a very straightforward process. Connor! Just kidding. I'll look with Holly Hale. Hannah, I dumped all the chairs. Verify that 
the top equation, the top function, is the solution to this differential equation. Um, you know, we could plug this x and y in here to start with and then figure out what c is and start from there, but we want to show that this is a solution, just this. And, if, and basically, when we leave c, we're saying that any equation, let me make sure I wrote this down, any, any equation that looks like 3x squared plus 2y squared equals any number, any number at all, then it doesn't matter what that number is, it will be a solution to this differential equation. Now, if we solve for c and we plug a specific number in for c, then we don't show that. Does that make sense? So we leave this as c, not figure out what c is. Do you love our math class? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yay. <laughs> first sure. So the first thing that we need to do in order to prove, in order to show that this is a solution to this differential, differential equation, is figure out what y prime is. Right. So let's figure out what y prime is. Six so x. <laughs> Derivative of 3x squared v. Oh, you don't, have to, you don't have to get y by itself? No? Great. No. Oh, yeah. We oh, definitely yeah. did that. Yeah, definitely wrong. You could. Yes. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is we much easier. Let's just we'll just take it, it implicitly. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, great. You didn't know what we were talking about. Yeah. Okay, so we got plus 2y, y prime. To be 4y. Oh. Okay, yeah, I was. 4y, y prime. Equals zero. <coughs> equals zero. Good. Yeah, nice job, Logan. You, you go. I know. Yeah, you're awesome. All right, so now y prime equals negative 6x over 4y equals negative 3x over 2y. And then we'll take this, put it right there. Put it right there. <coughs> see if we can get that thing to come out to be zero. We might have to do some other substitution, but we'll see. Three x plus two y times negative three x over two y. Twos cancel. Uh, y's cancel. We get three x minus three x. Beautiful. Wow, we made it much harder. Yeah, we definitely. Yeah. I was doing that. I was so. Oh gosh. Just cross this whole thing out, man. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. But it's it's worth a, a, a second to think about. <laughs> Getting y by itself, right? Give it a second. But it might be easier just to leave it the way it is and take the derivative implicitly. If it's not already solved for y, they, you know, you got to think a human being wrote this problem and they probably intended you to take it implicitly. So it's not, it's not a bad idea to think about the fact that a human being wrote these problems. Um, okay. So it checks out, this is a solution to that differential equation, but that's, well, because there's a C there, this is called what? The general. The general solution. So we want to find the specific solution of a particular solution by <coughs> figuring out what C is. How do we figure out what C is? There's X, there's Y. When X is one, Y is three. Yep, so we plug those in. We plug those in. Three times uh, one squared plus two times three squared that's going to be, C is already solved for. All we have to do is combine these numbers. 3 plus 9 times 2 is 18. 21 is C. So the, the particular solution is 3x squared plus 2y squared equals 21. <laughs> that's, 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 that's 20. Oh, no. <laughs> 20, you know? There you go. I know. What? I think it's Um, okay, well, 
I'm gonna let you get in some practice time. You just go ahead and start your. Oh, all right. Great day.